and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this later on for some more Golgari Stompy. As y'all know, uh, this is one of my favorite decks to play because we have Vivian Arcbow Ranger, my favorite card from M20 that we are uh, taking full advantage of with Rotting Registor. These two are just like a match made in heaven, the Rotting Registor and the Vivian Arcbow Ranger. Because you have a 3-mana 7-6, which is just a huge creature, but that's all it is. It's just a very, very big creature for a little amount of mana, but it just has the downside of discarding a card every upkeep, um, but doesn't, you know, doesn't have trample, can just get chump locked and all that kind of stuff. Doesn't really get through. However, Vivian Arcbow Ranger gives it trample and makes it even bigger. You could put some counters on it and give it trample, and it just ends games so fast. And so, really like really like uh, the combination of those two cards together. As you can tell from the last time we played it, I was playing like some Thorn Lieutenants that weren't really that special, that didn't really uh, do a whole lot for us. And <clears throat> kind of thinking over and everything, I, I am going to try out the Knight of the Ebon Legions. So I was, I was skeptical. So I, I first, I haven't been playing the Knight of the Ebon Legions because um, I was skeptical of casting them early with like how little black sources that we have and everything. But honestly, we don't need to really ca cast Knight of the Ebon Legion that early. But, it, you know, it's it doesn't have to be like a turn one play for us. And uh, <clears throat> we we have like the ability just to kind of fit it in somewhere. You know, like whenever we have four mana, maybe we play like a Steel Leaf Champion plus a, a Knight of the Ebon Legion like together kind of thing. You know, it's, it's really easy to double spell with it because it only costs one mana. And something that I was kind of overlooking is that with Knight of the Ebon Legion's ability, it gets really big and it gets hard to block, right? Well, what if you, what if, uh, you know, like maybe some people have to like chump block and everything. Well, what if you give it Trample? Knight of the Ebon Legion with Trample is actually pretty insane because Death Touch and Trample together is an awesome combination. So let's say, let's say we put two counters on it with the Vivian. So it's a 3-4. And we activate the Knight of the Ebon Legion, give it plus three, plus three, give it Death Touch. So it's a six, seven. And let's say our opponent has to chump block it with something. They block with a two, two, for example. Like, let's say they're kind of close to dying or whatever. I don't know. We'll just say, like, or they block with a three, three. Who knows? Maybe they block with a four, you know, whatever they, whatever they block with, it doesn't matter. With the Death Touch, all you have to do is assign one damage to the creature with because of Death Touch. And then you can trample over all the rest of the damage. So in this scenario, our six power Knight only has to do one damage to the blocking creature and then can do five damage to the opponent also um, and then you know trigger itself so getting death touch trample on a big creature actually seems pretty incredible i i want to put a fourth knight of the ebon legion in here i just can't really find room for it right now uh, i think i think maybe something maybe i to get a fourth knight i move away from growth chamber guardians and go towards like thorn lieutenant and other stuff, um, the Bark Hydral or Crowl Harpooner, or honestly, Merfolk Branchwalker. I actually kind of like Branchwalker. It's just playing a couple Branchwalkers. Maybe, like, maybe I move away from that and I get a fourth Knight back and maybe get a third Vivian Champion of the Wilds back. But basically, I took out the two Thorn Lieutenants and took out one Champion of the Wilds to get these Knight of the Ebon Legions in here. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to play this out. Uh, I think this is going to, I think it's going to play very well. Um, the, the only other little change I did in here is we've been playing three Ripjaw Raptors, and I decided that I think the first Cavalier of Thorns is probably better than the third Ripjaw. Uh, just to, you know, like, with Rotting Regisaur, you don't want to play a lot of expensive things because, you know, if you're discarding your cards every turn, you're not going to hit a lot of land drops. So that's, like, that's why we don't want to just play, like, a whole bunch of expensive things with Rotting Regisaur. It doesn't work out very well. But I think we can get it along with one Cavalier of Thorns one other five drop here getting that extra land does help you know you activate knights and and everything and does it is definitely beneficial so we're going to try that we got the brand new unhinged forest to try out and we got our kind of our same sideboard that we were playing before i liked it before we're going with it again uh but yeah let's let's get some golgari stompy we're gonna go ahead and just just play this deck over here in mythic Hopefully pick up some wins. We've been having some rough leagues recently. So we're going this one in ranked. Let's see how let's see how Golgari Stompy does.
Okay, cool, I've had. Yeah, you weren't you weren't in here, so yeah, I switched you to the fourth slot, so yeah. Sounds good. Well his hand would have been perfect, you know, like if these are all like shock lands or something, you know, like we'd be able to to play turn one elf, turn two steel leaf, turn three Vivian is a really nice curve, but we're splashing a color, so we got a bunch of tap lands. That's alright. Um, I don't, I don't think find finality is great with Rotting Regisaur, because, like, whenever you cast, like, you know, like, let's say you have, so you're saying that you think that Rotting Regisaur and find finality work well together, I, so they don't really work that well together, like, let's say you have your Rotting Regisaur on the battlefield, you play your, your find finality, you get your two cards, but then you're just gonna have to discard, like, you're just gonna have to discard them, or, like, one of them, not both of them, of course, but you're gonna have to discard one of them back to the Rotting Registrar. With Rotting Registrar, you just want cheap cards that you get out of your hand, basically. You don't want... Uh, you don't want to have a hand. Which is why Vivian Champion of the Wilds works so well. Because Vivian Champion of the Wilds gets you extra cards, but not as part of your hand. They just kept a one lander? What? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I should have tapped the I should I need to manually tap the landmore elf. Whoops. Sorry, Knight. I'm gonna have to save you for next turn. Smallest ant to the largest hydra, nature is beautiful. Get him. Well, I so I missed out on one point of damage this turn, but I guess I gained one point of damage last turn, so it actually evened out completely whether I played the knight this turn or last turn. Like I would have attacked for one more here, but I would not have attacked for one last turn. So it actually just just evened out. Okay, Feather could can definitely be tough for us. I know we struggled with Feather before because we don't we don't really interact with our creatures very much. Hmm. So we could have Legion's End, Chupacabra, we could try to duress away spells. I don't, I don't like love these plans. Like Chupacabra is very slow. Legion End doesn't get feather. Our best card in this matchup is definitely going to be the Arc Bow Ranger. Like we, the games I've had success is just like playing big things, Arc Bow Rangering them, making them too big, killing them. Twenty nine. All right. What if we go? Take out Champion of the Wilds and Growth Chamber Guardian and go Duress, Legion's End, Choop. Twenty six creatures still, but I guess All right, let's go with this. So we'll see if they're Naya or Poros. What, what feather deck they are. Yeah, I like these. I like the un Unhinged Forest also. I wish. I wish they sold the card style for the Unhinged Forest. You know, like this is the card style. See how there's like there's no border. I wish you could get this with with no border. Man, that would look really sweet.
Uh, I have I have nothing against Feather. Feather is Feather's a really good deck. No, I didn't change Avatar. I could have gone. Maybe I should go with, like, uh, go with Vivian here. We were kind of a Vivian tribal deck. I feel kind of bad if they're playing Shock to play the Knight of the Ebon Legion here. So my opponent needs to do that during end step. It would not have triggered the Knight of the Ebon Legion if they would have done it during end step. Because Knight triggers, you know, at the beginning of the end step, it, you know, like, that's where it checks. So if you just go to the end step and then do it. Of course, they just had... Just had a coil, so it didn't really matter. Uh, yeah, I'll play the Swamp. Close your eyes. And listen to the sounds of the wild. My, my, how you've grown. So this is risky here. If my opponent does have another removal spell for the Paradise Druid, then I can kind of have nothing. Um, I could have just held the Paradise Druid back, keep it with Hexproof, and then next turn uh, tick up on it again, make it a 6-5. Looks like I should have held it back. That was tough. This place I was definitely like considering scene. doing that. Well, I guess that was the line. Guess that was the line. They would attack my Vivian, put it down to two, then I make it a six five, then play the new Vivian, then kill the feather. You and then yeah, then we would have been able to play Galta. Yep. Turns out that was the line. So feathers, feathers tough for us. It's not a matchup I like. I've been saying that a lot recently. We keep on getting paired against a deck that I don't like getting paired against with whatever deck we're playing. You know, like the Rakdos deck is, isn't very good against Mono Red, so we're getting paired against Mono Red. This one, we don't get paired against Feather. That's our pairing. Our land destruction deck, we don't want to see Risen Reef, Cavalier Thorns, like ways to ramp and put a bunch of whole, whole a whole bunch of lands into play. That's what we that's what we face with the the land destruction deck. Everything has its holes.
Hey, Project Vanner. I make one bad play of attacking with that Paradise Druid, and now we're just going to lose the match. And of course, they top deck a creature. Tearing this place to the ground. This will be fun to watch. I don't I don't honestly know how we beat Double God's Willing here. Oh, we definitely don't beat that now. Luck will turn around, though. Uh, but yeah, the end of last night, we were like losing all our matches, and now today, losing all our matches. This is rough. Can we just get some wins? I mean, it's not like, it's not like none of it's my fault, you know, if I don't attack. I just don't attack with that Paradise Jury game, too. Good chance we win that. It's not like I'm playing perfect. Alright, we're gonna try to end this game quickly with Rotting Registrar, Vivian, Arcbow Ranger. Uh huh, thanks, Rex. Massacre Girl does kill creatures through God's Willing, yes, but there has, you know, they have to be like one toughness or whatever. Close your eyes. Breathe, and listen to the sounds of the wild. I'd get out of the way if I were you. So a good chance... There's certainly a chance that we have lethal next turn. That we, ki that we kill our opponent next turn. By just ticking up, making that thing 11 power, playing another Vivian, ticking up again, making it... 13 power. That's exactly what we want to see. It was turn turn three. I mean, I, I played Paradise Druid on turn two, so we played Regisaur on turn three and Vivian on turn four. Okay, so they have to... So they're going to just jump block with the Leafkin Druid. Um... Well, let's see. 10, 13. They're at 11, 14, 15, 16. So they have 16 total toughness. We can make this 
Yeah, I mean, this is just my play. I'd get out of the way if I were you. We make it 15, so they go to one. They have to block with everything, and then they go to one. Tear it down. We're fit enough to survive. Oh yeah, I could have just killed the O3. Yeah, that was lethal. I just killed the O3. Gosh, yeah, fighting Drew is lethal. Ugh. I'm not playing perfect. We'll see if they block with everything. Yeah, that's what y'all told me in chat to do that. But, well, they didn't block, so... They're dead. So are you worried about by turn four them already having five Risen Reef triggers by turn four? Well, you just kill them. So Rotting Registor does. Just kills him. Alright, so this seems like a, probably a pretty good matchup for the Massacre Girl. <laughs> yeah, better. it's better to be dead than lose the Risen Reefs. I agree. So Massacre Girl, Choop. Do I want to just take out the Growth Chamber Guardians again? Or do I want to take out, like, Cavalier Thorns? Take out Vivian, the big Vivian. I'm gonna take up. I guess Big Vivian kills Krasis, though. Yeah, Krasis. All right, let's get these Legion's ends in here. All right, we'll take out the Growth Chamber Guardians. All right, final answer. Turn three Steel Leaf, turn four Ravenous Jupacabra good enough? There's only one way to find out. Draw Llanowar Elf, first turn. Llanowar Elf. Land, the worst possible draw. Yeah, Vivian Vivian's plus is better than a Johnny's plus. It's a lot better. It's and Vivian's minus being removal is really nice. It's like for a Johnny, you really have to um you really have to build around the minus ability with a Johnny. But yeah, I think Vivian's a stronger card than a Johnny. Shouldn't be too difficult of a choice. I wouldn't think. Let's target Chandra. Hey, Fairmount. Thanks for making it. 
I don't think you're late at all. You're right on time. Hey, Academy. I don't really have a favorite card of all cards, but the one that I say, if people ask, is Courser of Crew Fix. Yes, as far as I know, the Mythic Champ code is working again now. To get a, a pack on Arena, if y'all haven't gotten the pack, the... Huh. They did decide to do the damage to Chandra. They listened. Stop drawing lands, deck. Draw Planeswalkers. Games aren't going so good for us. Been losing a lot. But it's still magic, so it's still a lot of fun. The block's pretty bad if they have another Omnath, which I think's kind of likely. We're going to need to get this Paradise Druid in play to be able to turn on Masker Girl. They're stealing my stuff. I protect that which cannot yep. protect so we're going to play, play Paradise Druid here this turn. This is going to be the only card I'm going to play. Rise, my elemental friend. Guess I'm kind of dead though. No, this is the first time we've played against an opponent that has mass manipulation. So obviously still not very likely that we win this against Nyssa, but we'll see. All they need is another Omnath to kill us. And they're adding mana for Omnath here. Am I supposed to play Vela Summer because of mass manipulation? Just sucks putting Veil of Summer in the deck because it's only good against mass manipulation and like the whole deck. 
It's just like, what's the chances that you draw your Veil of Summer and they draw the, the mass manipulation and you have, you know, you have your mana up and you get them and all that kind of stuff. It's just, it doesn't happen. You just usually, either they draw manipulation and you don't draw your Veil or you draw your Veil and they don't have the ma manipulation and it doesn't do anything. What's up, Vladimir? Thanks for that. Three sub there, sub number eight on the day. Well, y'all are still awesome. Is Veil good against Omnath? I mean, sure, you save two damage. Is that, like, something that you want to be doing? I mean, is that, like, do you really need to, like, bring in a card to try to try to save that two damage? It only cantrips whenever they play a blue spell, which is just Omnath and Manipulation, so it's not like it just always cantrips. Is Omnath, like, bugged or something? Because both Omnaths that they played, they dealt the damage to themselves. And, like, it took, like, a while, and then, like, it like they ran out of time, and they dealt damage to themselves. Is it, is it like, bugged? Both Omnaths were like that. Should I just concede here? I don't think my opponents... I think the, there's something wrong with this. Should I just concede here? Like, the opponent should have won this with that Omnath there. Or may I guess maybe they just disconnected, though. I guess if they disconnected, then... Don't really want to concede for that. Yeah, that's true. I would have had to block different because of the first Omnath. That's true. I wouldn't have been able to just go down to two anyway. Yeah, it sounds like y'all, everybody's in chat talking about different connection issues that they've been having. Well, if they're, if they're just disconnected, though, like, if they're if they're playing, I wouldn't mind conceding, but they're disconnected, then, like, I concede, then we have to, like, sit sit back and, like, wait the two minutes during the, the sideboarding and everything, and it's just, like, a, a whole lot of waiting and everything. So, like, guys, like, so we should really be going to game three there. All right, I'll change the avatar. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good with worthy. that. We'll go Vivian. My opponent was disconnected. That's why my opponent blew up there. They were disconnected. Well, this is definitely looking worse than Ripjaw Raptor right now. We'll see if it looks worse, you know, in four turns or whatever. But just in the opening hand, Ripjaw Raptor would be looking better. Uh, I thought that was going to be Duress. I was saying that was going to be turn one Duress.
Let's raise a good card. Certainly wish we had more mana. Love to have like Vivian out and be able to instant speed Galta. History's gonna do a lot of damage to us though. You complaining that I main phased the Growth Chamber Guardian while my opponent was tapped out and couldn't respond with a removal spell? That's a silly complaint. Yeah, YouTube has ads. That's how I make money on YouTube is the ads. They get played there. If you watch the ads, I get money. I was, I was hoping with blocking there they wouldn't be able to do any um, they wouldn't be able to do anything else your life blood is sweeter than wine. let's tear this place apart you can still walk away Uh, being a subscriber to me on YouTube, I don't think really affects me. Um, yeah, they, they don't give me a whole lot of information about it. Um, I think, like, yeah, so... As far as, like, the different types of YouTube memberships, as you're saying, like, YouTube Red, I don't really know what that even means. To be honest. Have you ever lost a home? But I don't, so I don't know. I know that, it, so I get, I get revenue from people watching ads and then also from people joining like YouTube premium or maybe maybe it's people with the YouTube premium account watching my stuff I don't know something to do with YouTube premium also I don't know if that's what that YouTube red is or not I don't know Okay, I get a portion of the YouTube red fees when people subscribe. Okay, cool.
down, down, down. Strike now! Strike hard! Yeah, I'll have instant speed Chupacabra to kind of mess up their blocks. So I'm hoping to kill them this turn. Well, thank you so much, Narnan. Thank you. This is a very difficult block step for our opponent. This is exactly lethal. The, the two life gain, yeah, so it's exactly lethal with three there. Yep, so exactly lethal. Galt is pretty cool. All right, let's bring this legion to its end. Yeah, the, the Vigilance from Vivian Champion of the Wilds is really important there. Also, my opponent not attacking that turn they, that the uh, History Benalia went off and they just didn't attack with anything else that really saved me. They were too passive there. Hmm. That's certainly an option to play a second Galta over Cavalier at Thorns. It could be better. I haven't. I'm just trying out the Cavalier at Thorns this time. I'm, I used to play three Ripjaw Raptors in here, so I'm trying it. I'm trying Cavalier over the third Ripjaw. And I haven't been. I haven't been too happy with the Cavalier yet, but really Cavalier is more like they're they're for different matchups. Like Cavalier really helps against the control decks like Esper. Because it, you know, it ramps you. It gets you like whatever card you want back from your graveyard, all that kind of stuff. Where Galta is is much better against decks that aren't playing removal. Like the thing is, is like you need you need to already be playing like multiple creatures and having them all out and survive and everything for Galta to even be a card whatsoever. Because otherwise, Galta is just. Just a dead card. Any more knights over there? Nope. A Gideon. Ugh, Gideon. I will defend the weak at okay, Friday, you're playing the Risen Reef Gallows deck. Or Golos deck, yep. Have any desire to play one of Field of the Dead? I could see that. I could certainly see that.
yeah, like like that. I think that deck could play a Field of the Dead. Your light will <laughs> cleave the darkness. Yep, this is not the land destruction deck. <laughs> that was earlier. So I want to be attacking Gideon, but I also want to be growing these knights. I think it's probably better for me to grow the knights to try to get to this Galta. For like the first turn. And like maybe next maybe this next turn I kill Gideon. I could see them minus six Gideon exile one of my Knight of the Ebon Legions here though. I could see that happen. No. Prepare for battle. Definitely feels like a waste. I think they have Noxious Grasp in hand as one of the cards, maybe to spark. Um, Mortify. Tilt. Tilt. You do not frighten me. I was thinking they had Noxious Grasp or to spark. Or they weren't going to be able to kill the knight. That's unfortunate. Knight only gains counters on your turn. You, you don't get counters on your opponent's turn whenever they whenever they attack you. you. Yeah, that was a, ended up being a waste of a turn. Wish I would have chupacabra. Better not have drawn another two mana in speed removal spell here. Another day. Yeah, if I would have boost the vampire, they would have mortified my vampire in response. Much more reliable so I was gonna see if they mortified one of my two. Not bad. For a mouse. You fight like a city brat. Maybe I just get old Rippy. Get old Rip J. Nah. Force was a good draw. So I can just discard here. That was one of the weaker vampire hands that we've played against. I mean, their, their opening hand was good. Knight of the Ebon Legion, Gideon, Legion, Legion's Landing. I mean, it's, I don't think it was a mulligan, but they just... They drew, you know, like three or four lands there, kind of in a rowish uh, there. Yeah, they drew kind of poorly. 
Thanks, Ice Yoshi. GG's. Ooh, that's a mulligan. Going down to five. I think I'm just gonna lead with Temple. All right, maybe I could should have kept the Overgrown Tomb. Ooh, that's not bad. It's not bad. Actually, that that actually works out really well. Okay, this is working. We're doing it. All right, we're doing it. If they don't have Teferi to bounce my Knight of the Ebon Legion, I, I like our chances. I just upload the YouTube videos from the stream. I don't have any editor or anything. I don't. I don't know how to do video editing. You show remorse. I'll show the strength. There goes nothing. So of course they had the Teferi bounce. Why not? Belize it's bounced right now. It's not as bad bouncing right now as like later after we put a bunch of counters on the knight. Like, later bounce would have been harder for me to deal with. Here we go. Why not Vivian minus three there? Because it's... We can't... We have to be We have to be fast. Like, they, they have the late game. We can't... Uh, I don't think we can take, like, that turn off and not, not put in any... Any pressure. Close your eyes. And listen to the sounds of the wild. My, my, how you've grown. That blast sound's gonna kill me, by the way. I'm pretty dead here because of the blast zone. Really hope no no four mana sorcery speed. I suppose that's how it was meant to happen. Okay. That's not the worst scenario. The worst case scenario was them using that, you know, play, playing like the four mana sorcery speed uh, ramp spell. That would have definitely been worse for me. A 10,000 YouTube subscriber event. Yeah, maybe I should do something there. What can Vivian go get for me? Just like Masker Girl. So she keep Paradise Druid around. So I want to do this. Fit enough to survive. Yeah, no problem, my bad. That's what my opponent did was they, they blocked and then destroyed Blast Zone to try to save Teferi. That's what my opponent thought they were doing, but everybody forgets about Vivian giving the creature trample, so even though they blocked, still trampled over. I would not be yes, correct Phoenix. I'm not I wouldn't be streaming on Twitch and YouTube at the same time. I'd I'd have to choose one or the other. Just hit 7 7500 YouTube subscribers. That's awesome. 
Sorry, I'm late. No, that's really bad. That's really bad. Yeah, that's really bad. No, I am not making this up as I go. Gosh, this Teferi in this deck is like the huge problem with this deck. Getting these instant speed scape shifts makes this so much harder to beat. Social Blade website. I've never heard of that. Well, that's what I was certainly hoping that they were going to do. Still have to beat it to Fairy, though. Only have one card left. I'm gonna use I'm gonna have Vivian minus and go grab Masker Girl and clear the board up. I guess it's really not that impressive. There's really not that many zombies. Maybe I don't actually need to do that yet. Hey, chillin' on. Thank you so much there for the Twitch Prime sub. Sub number nine on the day. There's only three zombies here. Double check. What am I doing here? They they bounce growth chamber guardian, hit Vivian for six. I no longer can go grab Masker Girl. I'm just dead. It makes no sense to scry first and then search with growth chamber guardian. That makes no sense. Nature's always got my back. Plus, Vivian would keep it alive and keep it at one counter, but one counter isn't going to be able to go grab Masker Girl anymore. Well, yeah, you, I mean, there's just no reason to, you should just be declining the search. I've seen too many species die already. If you don't like your card with your scry, you wouldn't just don't shuffle worry. your, your library. It. It'd make no sense to shuffle your library after that. Because you'd have, like, the card that you don't like on the bottom of your library. This Teferi just messed everything up for me. 
messed everything up so bad. No, yeah, if I, I could have dealt damage to, to yeah, I could have minus three and dealt damage to Teferi, but it doesn't kill the Teferi at that point. This might be a bad idea. I'm just dead. Should be lethal. But even if it's not, I'm not doing 17 damage before they come and kill me again. So not of the Ebon Legion excited for it in this matchup but i guess with blast zone blast zone does really hurt knight of the ebon legion What happened to time? We did not run out of time there. I don't think it let me sideboard. Oh man, wrong Vivian. If this was the other Vivian, this would be looking good. That's the wrong Vivian though. We need the other Viv like the other Vivian the other Vivian's our best card here, like it is in every matchup, but we need Rotting Registor to have trample. This one I don't I don't know about this. I'll, I'll, we're close. We have we have like a, you know our two card combo that's really gonna help us win is Rotting Registor, Vivian, Arcbow Ranger. Ugh. Went ahead and tried it with the scry land. We're still looking at, you know, like we were looking at, you know, turn three rotting and going from there, which is still what we got. Yeah, 
Yeah, same thing happened a few days ago, too. The second match today that I didn't sideboard. Just hoping to play against this deck one time where they don't have Teferi. Would be nice. But I don't I don't have like Legion's Ends or anything in here now. Of course. So this is their turn four. They got seven mana on turn four. What does Scape Shift get? Like, they're gonna have just turn four Scape Shift. It gets what seven two twos. That's gross. Time cut out with 10 seconds left whenever we're just sideboarding. Oh. I can of course they have to ferry. Yeah, there's seven instant speed scape shift. Why not? Thing before. Why not? If we had the other Vivian, give this trample. Wrong Vivian. Don't think I attack with Paradise Druid because we want to be able to top deck the other Vivian. What a hand. Just turn four, instant speed, scape shift, seven lands. We have not seen the Scape Shift deck stumble at all today. Every time we're playing against it, their hands are just always awesome. But they just always have like multiple Teferis, multiple Scape Shifts. They're only playing four of each of those cards, and there's just never any games where they don't have them. Not today, at least. Has been in the past, but not today. All right, hopefully we draw Vivian. I mean, we have four Vivians. Why can't we draw our Vivian? Because Vivian would get both of these Rotting Registers Trample be nice. You know, the question is if they have their second scape shift, I'm I'm just going to be dead. Okay, not second scape shift. That's good. I'll protect you. Doom Waffle, thank you so much for that sub. Our 10th subscriber on the day, which hitting that sub goal means we are going to be going for a 12 hour 
stream on Wednesday now. And Waticus, keep it on that 11th month streak. Being sub number 11 as well. Perfect timing, Waticus. All right, so I'm gonna mark that down. So that is the 20 sub goals. Hopefully I'll get to sideboard next time. Let's go 12 hour stream Wednesday. No, I'm not. No, I'm streaming tomorrow. Okay, so yeah, that was our 20th sub goal. That's what we do. We're doing a 12 hour stream every 20 sub goals. Now we're starting that over. Get the count going for the next 12 hour stream. I may take Thursday off. Rotting Regisaurs. Oh, yeah, that's true. Tuesdays and Thursdays are always my lower, my, my least uh, watch days here. It's like when the most people are, most other Magic streamers are on and everything. So as far as me taking off days, Tuesdays and Thursdays are the better days for me to be taking them off. Yeah, I, I only took one day off in July. So yeah, tomorrow or Thursday, probably one one of those two days off. It's it's usually better to take the off day after after the twelve hour stream because I'm really tired after the twelve hour stream. But July was a good month too. You know, like with it just being after the new set releasing. It was a good time to be streaming a lot. And it's it's always a lot of fun streaming the new cards and everything, so that was like a that was like the reason why I wasn't really taking off days. Wild animals I like. People not so much. Tear it down! Tear it all down! All right, so Wednesday we're gonna have the twelve-hour stream, noon to noon to midnight. So we're gonna be playing seven decks instead of four. That's how the time kind of works out. It's we're gonna be doing seven decks. So if anybody has any donation decks that they want to get uh, want to be played on Wednesday. You know, you can kind of tell me, like, around what time. Any time from, like, noon to, to midnight Eastern. I'm not planning on taking tomorrow off Project Banner. Tomorrow is Tier 1 Tuesday, where we'll play some Tier 1 decks. Tier 1 Tuesday. 
Storm's favorite day. I wonder if my opponent thinks they're going to kill me. I've seen squirrels hit harder. No, they just didn't even attack. That was an interesting choice. I would have had to. I would have had to trade with the riding register. I could have like the the register had vigilance because of vi or sorry had reach. But I would have had to trade at least. There is wonder in a blade of grass. They didn't even make me trade. But yeah, helm of the host for Wednesday. Work on thumbnails now. Very good, very good. Thank you, Yad. Um, so yeah, Helm of the Host. Ugh. So what are we? Oh, we're against Mono Red. Spitfire is a little bit of a problem. Certainly can be. I don't think I do. I play Vivian Reed for Spitfire. That doesn't seem worth it. We got Cavalier Thorns. We got this thing giving us vigilance. What am I cutting? Is it just Growth Chamber Guardian like always? Yeah. No, you cannot drop from platinum to gold. Nope. Once you hit, once you reach a tier like that, once you get a rating, then uh, you're good. You can't drop from there. I love Riptar Raptor against Red, but not Riptar Raptor is my very first thing to do. Well, I guess we're keeping this, though. I don't think I should, I don't think I should go to five. So this is a problematic hand because we have the basic swamp. So if we're, if we're trying to play Steel Leaf Champion on turn three, we don't really have the ability to do that. I'm going to ditch the swamp. And I'm going to hope we draw a forest, like, with this temple and everything. See, we had the forest the whole time. So now the Woodland Cemeteries will come into play untapped. Even though I could play Land Werewolf next turn, it's not a very good card right now. And they could have Chain Whirler. Yeah, you can always ask questions. Yep, always ask questions. Stemkin. What does finishing the season at a rank give you? Um, if you go, if you just go to the your profile page, it tells you the rewards for every for each uh, for each rank. It's just booster packs and gold, basically. So I'm either playing another champion. All right, well that makes playing a champion better. I was going to say I would be worried about another coil.
Hey, what's up, Quiltine? Thank you so much for the bits. I like all of our options here. Chupacabra killing Spitfire. Just going with the Cavalier of Thorns. So if I go with Cavalier of Thorns, I guess this thing will be a 7-3 next turn. Like if they want to with like this and then that. And I, I think I like Chupacabra killing Spitfire over Arcbow Ranger killing Spitfire. But killing Spitfire is going to happen. There you go, Quiltine. Number one bit leader. That's a pretty sweet badge. Get a temple? Wow, that's lucky. Get a scry also. Oh no, Jackson took the badge. You gotta type one more thing, Jackson, then you get so you can show off your badge. <laughs> Thanks, Jackson. Thanks for the bits. Oh no, if I go Reggie Galta, then I have to discard Arcbow Ranger. Hmm. I don't really want to discard Arcbow Ranger. I guess I just go Galta. I couldn't I don't think I could do Vivian counters in Gal in Galta. I was one mana short. Because if I go Viv, because Galta cost five, and so the Viv encounters would have reduced two, so I was one mana short. <laughs> Hero Shook! Taking that first place spot. Thanks, Hero Shook. Just have a chain whirler. I love everything from deer to dinosaurs. So I can't die next turn, right? All right so three, four, five, six. Let's say they draw like a removal spell for this. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Actually, I could die. Okay, if, if they draw like shock, yeah, they'd have to draw exactly shock. Oh no, because then they wouldn't have the mana to play that and that. So no, I don't think I can die. I guess I just don't even need to... <clears throat> I don't even need to put, like, counters on this Galta. If that was, like, my plan, my, put counters my. on the Galta, How but don't even need wrong. to. I guess I probably should just play Rip J and Reggie. Narinin! <laughs> For all show enough, I gotta show my bits, too. <laughs> Thanks, Narinin. Did the notification pop up? I didn't see it if it did. <laughs> you were lucky to get that close. <laughs> That's how your your games go against Mono Red also. I can't die next turn, right?
Quilting, getting that gifted a sub from RX Jelly. All right, three and two. Galta winning versus red again. You are robbed of your notifications? All right, well, I can fix that. There we go. All right, also, we need to, we need to crack a pack because we hit a sub goal during that match. So let's crack our pack, try to get a mythic. We're always trying to open up mythics here. Got a rare wild card. And I forgot about that card. I thought that was easy, even a card. Masterful Replication. Hmm. Forgot that was a thing. Well, the, our other leagues went kind of fast today. I think we got time for another one. Let's play one more. I like playing this deck. No, I don't play limited. I, I like limited. I have played a lot of limited in the past and everything. Uh, but for stream, I have always gotten more viewers and everything with, with standard. And, and I like standard a lot too. So, um, yeah, I just play standard. Is there any artifact to clone with that card? I kind of feel like the best artifact to clone with that card may be... Hmm. Uh, a Karnstruct. I think you want a lot of artifacts have a Karnstruct out there, and then you make all your cards Karnstruct, so they're all super big. Man, I was all ready to, like, shock in for this Knight of the Ebon Legion. Not anymore, not against the shock deck. Oh, maybe this isn't a shock deck. Maybe they got me. I wouldn't really be able to attack this turn anyway, so. No harm. One foul. They like Defiant Strike this thing or something. Are you kidding me? Give me a break. Traxes. The percent is just simply the ranking that you have. Like that's that's my ranking in Mythic right now is ninety four percent. The higher the percent, the better. Oh yeah. Valley Town is that's a great that's a great deck. It's a, it's a great deck. Shocking in here. How would, it, how would it make sense to make top 1,000 a different tier? If you make it, you can't fall off like the other tiers, or can you can you fall off once you're in the top 1,000? The problem with that also, it really restricts your matchmaking ability. You know, like, there's a 1,000 a people is not many. If you can only get matched against other people in that, you know, there's not, you know, there's 
there's a chance there's not that many of those people that are on playing that that format right then at any one time. So isn't it like just like it is? Deck choice to speed climb ladder. Uh, I would say Sultai Flash. We're playing against Feather. No, not Feather. This is exactly what happened before against Feather. We won game one because our opponent had a really crappy hand. And then we lost games two and three. Feather is not something I want to face. Our opponent does look to be a little bit of a budget version of Feather, which could be good for us. Land. Darn. Vivian, you were awesome, but I need land. I really hope there's three more 10th District Legionnaires over there in our opponent's hand. Three more. Darn, no more. There's a feather and a God's Willing. That's impossible to beat. Okay, got that updated. Um, Yeah, it's going to be tough to race this Domri's Ambush. I don't really want to discard these cards. Maybe I should be discarding the cards. dead yeah this game's just over what i like you know i play something they just kill it everything everything i play they just kill
unfortunate getting paired against Feather twice. That's our that's our downfall deck for with this one here. Soren Grim Nemesis, yeah. So that's a really good card. Ticking up and making your opponent lose life and you gaining life. Uh, equal to the CMC of your top card and putting that card in your hand. All right, hoping we draw a land here so we get to double spell with duress plus threat. Ugh. Well, if I wasn't going to draw a land, that was probably the best card to be drawing. Because that card makes my Rotting Registrar kill them. Now, obviously, we still need another land. We're going to be discarding these Steel Leaf Champions. Come on, land. Yay, we did it. We did it. Oh, I am gonna love tearing this place to the ground. Yay. Best two cards in our deck. Great combo. Routing Registor, Vivian, Arcbow Ranger. Alright, we beat we beat Feather. How about that? Yeah, our deck played definitely played some fast games there. A good good four two record. So we all right. So with this deck, you know, like this is like a stompy deck, like where we have a high creature count and everything. And the high creature counts make the Viv makes Vivians better, right? Like you need you need a lot of creatures, especially like with this Champion of the Wilds, how you only look at three the minus ability, you only look at three cards. So you need to be playing a good amount of creatures with this. Um, and obviously, if you don't have creatures in play with this Vivian, it's not doing anything. Like the games like where they kill your creatures and you have Arcbow Ranger, it's not doing anything. However, I wonder if wonder if this deck could go like taking out Champion of the Wilds and Growth Chamber Guardians and just going with like the black removal spells. <clears throat> kind of like how we sideboard into a lot. Like what if we could just have like if we if we take out Champion of the Wilds, we'd have room for the removal spells. Without needing like a super high creature count. And we could be playing like cast downs, legions ends, I don't know, things like that in the main. It'd certainly make our deck a lot worse against Esper. Like Growth Chamber Guardian and Champion of the Wilds are two of our better cards against Esper. So that's kind of the problem with doing that. But even when sideboarding, it's like you have to be careful not to take out too many creatures kind of thing. And so like our sideboard, you know, we have cards like Chupacabra, I don't know, Massacre Girl maybe. But like instead of, you know, other better removal spells, uh, you know, like we're not playing um, like Noxious, Noxious Grasps, for example, as like a really good card um, and things like that. So every time, so I don't know, it's just kind of food for thought. Every time I played this deck before, uh, Mr. Tasty, I, I did have three Rip Jaws. I tried a Cavalier of Thorns for this this league instead. And honestly, I wasn't really that impressed with the Cavalier of Thorns because we are a very aggressive deck. So I was, I didn't think like the moving one card to go from four to five mana, because as you see, like we don't really have five drops. I didn't think that would be that big of a deal, but it kind of was. Five mana with Cavalier wasn't great for us. Anyway, first, Rick with the sub. Thank you so much there, Rick. You are amazing. Everybody get your hype boats in the channel there. Thanks for that support. So yeah, having... So yeah, maybe going back to the three Rift Raptors is the thing to do there. Uh, Knight of the Ebon Legion wasn't... 
as good as I was hoping it was going to be, but still definitely very good. For one mana creature, it is awesome. It is worth it. Um, oh, you're welcome, Mr. Tasty. I'm glad you're enjoying the After League analysis. Yeah, that's what I like to do on there. Um, magic is a, a talking sport. It's fun to talk magic. And so, yeah, I like talking about the decks that we just played and everything. Yeah, the knight was definitely better than Thorn Lieutenant, though. Definitely. One mana was was really nice playing it, for sure. So, thumbs up on the knight. Um, still would like a fourth knight, but don't still don't really know where to fit in a fourth knight unless we just get rid of the growth chamber guardians completely and play other two drops. I th I think if we did that, I think the other two drop I'd actually want is Merfolk Branchwalker over the other options like Barkhide Troll and Thorn Lieutenant and things like that. With like Branchwalker just helps you hit like that extra land drop. You know, it's either that 3-2 that, that scries one or it's the 2-1 that draws a card. It's not perfect, but all the two drops kind of have their downside. And I I think I like I think I like Branchwalker the most. So if we decide to take out Growth Chamber Guardians, I think that's what I would do is put in uh Branchwalkers. I'd probably put in like yeah, I'd probably put in Branchwalkers in that that fourth knight. Yeah, if you don't have knights, you can put put in Branchwalkers, yeah. Yes, four four Arc Bow Ranger is the correct number. It is, it's, it's the card that, like the the best part about this deck is the combination of Rotting Registrar and Vivian Arc Bow Ranger, and that's whenever you're looking at your opening hands and everything, you want a Rotting Registrar and a Vivian Arc Bow Ranger. Vivian makes, not only does it make Rotting Registrar just incredible, it makes a lot of these other cards better. It makes Steel Leaf Champion a lot better, Ripjaw Raptor a lot better. It, it makes Growth Chamber Guardian a lot better. And we talked about at the beginning of the video how its its combination with Knight of the Ebon Legion is pretty insanely awesome also. Uh, Death Touch plus Trample is just an insane combination to have on a card. And especially one that gets as big as Knight of the Ebon Legion. So yes, this is this is certainly a four Vivian Arcbow Ranger deck. Uh, you would probably play five or six if you could. Like if, if I could just turn these Champion of the Wilds into Arcbow Rangers, it probably would. But you can't. Um, I don't love the Carnage Tyrant in the sideboard and you saw, saw we didn't really do anything with it here it's basically for control That's that's this is certainly a slot that could be changed and or upgraded or, or whatever maybe just a fourth duress is, is honestly better than the Carnage Tyrant I'm not sure I do like the second Vivian I think against Esper having two Vivians is very important I do like the second Vivian um, and I, I think I do like the Command the Dread Horde also. Basically, like, Esper was getting pretty popular. I have, like, these three for, like, Esper for the most part. But I think maybe we can take out the Carnage Tyrant there. And that could be something else. You know, if you want another card somewhere. Like, if you want a third... Like, if we want, like, a third Legion's End for, like, to help against these Scape Shift decks and just all the aggro decks and everything, that could be something. Take out Carnage Tyrant for a third Legion's End. Um... No, I would not drop to 22 lands. No, no. With four branch walkers, no. No. I think we have I think we have a good number of lands. We don't really flood out very much in this deck. I think 24 is a good number. The temples help us there. I've I've been happy with our mana base. Um, but there we go. <clears throat> All right, so that's uh, Golgari Stompy. Um, pretty good showing there. 4-2, Mythic, we'll take it. Uh, if you're watching the video later on YouTube, of course, like always, don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button over there. I'd appreciate both of those. But thank you so much for watching uh, Golgari Stompy here, and I will see you for the next video.